is the lower peninsula of Florida. And over here we have the Everglades National Park. Extending from Miami, a string of keys down to Key West for 150 miles. And this whole area constitutes one of the greatest islands rise from a shimmering sea. Gray green on the shallow coral flats that surround each key. Shading into turquoise and deeper blue as shallows give way to channels and grassy bottoms are exchanged for stretches of sand. The mood of the water is unpredictable to the point of capriciousness. A light breeze and glassy surfaces of sky blue become choppy surfaces of emerald green. These entrancing waters support all manner of marine life. From the lowly medusa in a tidal pool to the blackfish whale in the comfortable waters of the Gulf Stream. Green turtle and porpoise are as much at home here as the dolphin, the prehistoric and powerful tarpon, or any other of a hundred varieties. Everybody fishes. It's practically compulsive. Drive over the majestic Bayahonda Bridge, dating back to the days when the first Florida Express steamed proudly from Miami to Key West in 1912 or drive over the far more recently constructed tea table bridge. And what you see is people fishing. They fish from the catwalks on the side of the bridges. They fish with whatever tackle comes handiest, not excluding this magnificent surf casting rod. Small, middle-sized, and big. They fish along the shoreline, and even the bamboo pole comes into its own. And they fish from boats of all sizes, shapes, and horsepower. And Jimmy Albright is his favorite guy. Tarpon is what they go after on beautiful mornings like this. Now, I happen to live down in here in the middle part of all this. The water's beautiful, the weather's fine. The two very important reasons why I do live here is that two great fish are found here, bonefish and the tarpon. Tarpon are really something. They're big, they're strong, they're fast, they're eager. Boy, do they jump. The angler thrills to the tarpon's jumps, not only because they are spectacularly beautiful, but because they present such a keen challenge to his angling skill. Evolution stopped short for the tarpon before he had developed teeth and left his mouth a cavernous chamber of rock-hard cartilage with which he crushes his food. Set even the sharpest hook in this cartilage and by his contortions in and out of the water, he will throw it four times out of five. Many people still like to fish for tarpon in deep water with live bait and a deep sea rig. Having an 85-pounder on is great sport, even on a 65-pound test line with deep-sea tackle. But using light tackle with 15-pound test line and artificial bait provides even greater sport for fishermen like Ted Williams. With light tackle, you hunt for the tarpon by stealthily poling your skiff along the flats to where you spot the great fish rolling above water or gliding slowly immediately under the surface. With artificial bait, unfavorable weather may force you to cast blind, but you much prefer the greater challenge of casting directly to the tarpon. You excite him by presenting your lure to him at just the right distance to aggravate him 
into striking at the meddlesome and intrusive thing your lure is. Set your hook hard and firm if you can. The Silver King has millions of years back of that incredibly hard mouth of his. And keep that line tight, but bow to him the instant he jumps away from you. Or his hundred pounds will snap your flimsy little monofilament like the slender thread it is. Even though each pump may gain you only a few inches, don't relax for even a moment. Bring him in. In some more. Tighten up a little. He's close enough in. He's nothing if not gallant, the fighting tarpon. And this time, back in the water, he throws the lure successfully. Well, that round went to the tarpon. It wasn't because Ted was using spinning tackle, of course, but just for variety, he uses bait casting tackle the next day. The lure is the same, and the technique of silent polling is the same. The weather is brilliantly clear, so he can enjoy the challenge of casting directly to the tarpon whenever he appears. knowledgeable guide will maneuver the boat from moment to moment into the position that gives the angler the best advantage. In his prodigious efforts to expel the irritating hook from his mouth, the tarpon will discharge large quantities of water through his enormous gills, and sometimes will temporarily rupture some of the thousands of delicate blood vessels. Like a bloody-nosed boxer about to deliver a knockout blow, this fish is still showing all the spunk in the world. But apparently, Ted has decided to risk bringing him to gas. This has been an occasion that both angler and fish will long remember as each goes off to try his luck again. In the endless deep, and Ted with his lure of red bucktail and yellow hackles. The same ingredients he mixes into his flies. Watching him at work tying flies one day, we asked him what he was doing with the red bucktail. Training it up so that it'll tend to keep my hackles off the barb of the hook so it wouldn't fall up when I'm casting. Now I'm giving it the little twist here just to lock it. Every operation you have to get through with the fly, right? You lock. It. 
Next, we asked him what he was going to do with the hackle feathers. Putting on the, the wing of hackle, hackle feathers here so that they have action. They're long and they have action. So that they, uh, I'll just lock them in here so that they'll stay. I'll show you what I mean. See, they have action. See them? Train them. And after every operation, which is, in this case, is the wing, I give it the old treatment here on the on the lock. This locks this operation so that if I start the next one and I break off a thread, this here is locked. Now, of course, this is the hackle I'm putting on now. Now I take this little thing at the end here, and this just locks it all in, see? Just go right down the line and lock it in, the whole thing. This is way down at the bottom of the hackle where it'll really lock in. You can't tear that, you tear, tear the feathers, but you won't tear the fly apart. It's not that the fly resembles any of the food the tarpon likes to eat. He doesn't eat insects anyway. And besides, you don't necessarily cast this fly to him at feeding time when the tide is running. It is rather that your fly, judiciously cast, irritates him, taunts him, aggravates him into striking at the unnatural thing. This is why you use yellow hackle feathers. Yellow, in the case of the tarpon, is like a red flag to a bull and he charges it with the same sense of outrage. This is a little one, not much more than 50 or 60 pounds. But at this size, the tarpon is spectacularly agile. His jumps seem almost endless, but he's not to be taken lightly. After all, the leader on your fly line tests out at only 12 pounds, so you ease him in just as cautiously as you do this one, which is 10 or 15 years older and 40 or 50 pounds heavier. The tarpon's concern is with ridding himself of the meddlesome hook, by no manner of means with diving form. And so he will hit the water the way he happens to hit it. Head first, tail first, or a good old belly flop. Whether he's greyhounding like this, or jackknifing as this 130 pounder is doing here, the poetry of his motion compels you to hail him as the Silver King. When this one was taken in to be weighed, he hit the scale at 128 and a half pounds. Not bad for a 12 pound test rig. Today, he may weigh 138 and a half or more, and spinning tackle is what Ted's going to use. As always, preparations are essential. In these waters, you need a good, clean pair of Polaroid glasses to spot the tarpon. 
And no matter how frequently you go out, you need to protect your face against the burn of the fierce summer sun. And meanwhile, you watch. He's there if your eyes are keen enough to pick out that shadowy shape as it slips through the sea. Your hook can never be too sharp. And you want to be sure that the lure works just right for you in the water. actually are for more. You could have a cast as you can execute. No wonder you smile. He's taken you on and may the best man win. to throw that lure of yours any second now. You're hanging on, but how successfully? Pumping him in. And he's obviously a beauty. Coming closer now, but this is where one so often loses them. He seems to be getting tired, but watch out. Just for the sport of it, Jimmy is going to hand gap him. Tarponitis. This is what Ted has. It's like a disease once you catch it. What you find compulsive to do is to pit your skill and strength against the tarpon's immemorial instinct and power. Son, and the heat of mid-afternoon. You will cast your intricately contrived lure, and you might just get him to accept the challenge. The sweet taste of victory can be yours. But often as not, the decision will go to the greatest game fish of them all. <laughs> 